The next stage of this design phase for your inventive building is to design your two sides. What you're going to wind up doing is you're going to wind up showing two sides of a building. You're going to show basically the main front and the main side, whatever that is. Um, and it's essentially just a two-sided box form. Um, we're not going to overcomplicate the perspective. You're going to need to draw big enough so that you can get some detail in it. And we just need to decide on what, on what like the final look of this is going to be. So, you know, my basic shape of the thing that, that I've been doing um, and demoing is this kind of thing. Um, it's sort of boring. You know, it's subdivided about here and here. Um, so maybe I want to like change that shape and make it a little more dramatic or something. I could um, make the building a little bit wonky by just changing the shape um, and having it still be boxy but flare out like that. I could change the divisions so that they're kind of like uneven and go at these at these different kind of levels. Um, so my building division subdivisions could do something more like this. They'll still be in perspective and everything, but they'll just be a little bit off. And I can maintain the solidity um, even though things are kind of like strange looking and odd. Okay. So what I need to do is figure that out, make some decisions, and then do kind of a bigger study of, of the side and, and front and just be a little bit more specific. I might be able to, um, to use some tone in there, some like val some like flat areas of value, maybe define some stuff that's more recessed and shadowed and so on. And after this, I'm going to decide on the textures and then kind of go for it. Um, so I'm going to draw my building. Um, sort of big. Uh, I think what I want to do is um, kind of break up the facade a little more rather than have it be like straight up this sort of split here. Um, I think what I want to do is um, change up the shape. So I'm gonna I can go over and do some do some quick sketching and just kind of say well you know if my subdivisions up here I can kind of like bring it in maybe at the top. If I bring in the top and make it narrow and make this like narrow and sit on a platform and then do this sort of thing, it'll be kind of like um, like a tiered cake or something like that where um, the height of it, the verticality of it is going to be emphasized. Because um, if I turn it into like a three point perspective situation where the building is kind of doing this, this kind of thing as well as showing those two sides, then if I have a smaller tiered area up here, then I'm really overemphasizing the verticality of it, which is kind of cool. So, um, but then I also kind of like this idea that of this sort of wonky shape. Um, so maybe what I could do is do that wonky shape, but then bring in the sides a little bit so that it kind of just like sits precariously on top of that. And then I can, since this is kind of the doorway side with like a column right here, I can break up the side over here and have it have this side continue basically, and then this side be broken up. So there's asymmetry here. And I think I kind of, I kind of like that stylization. Um, so I think I'm gonna run with that. And when I do this big, I'm gonna actually do the same sort of process. And I think Drawing soft is probably the best bet. So what I want to do is just kind of think asymmetrically. You know, up here I had this kind of flat, but I think I want to go more like that with it. Angle it. So I'm going to angle it. And I want to draw soft. When you draw this, you should be drawing... I'm going to go flat on the bottom. But you should be drawing where these initial lines, your search, is kind of really faint. Um, if you're having trouble do that, doing that, then grab out your um, your 10% cool gray marker and use that to help you with your 
um, initial sort of searching lines. I'm going for heavy asymmetry. And, you know, I want to come inside, inside this shape just a little bit, this initial shape for my actual edge. And then I want to bring that one in on this side too, just so that it doesn't hit that same like outer edge that I created in the beginning. Um, and then I've adapted it and swung it out over here. And then I'm going to bring it, um, you know, the column is going to start here, like the base of the column is going to be over here. Or the capital of the column is going to be here, and the column is going to be like right here. So the column is going to be like one of the strangest things. I might have to actually like, so it looks like it makes sense, bend the column around here and then bring it up so it kind of like the physics of it kind of works, right? Because I'm creating this opposition, and if I go like tilt it too weird, it's going to look too off. Um, and then I'm going to start in with my subdivisions, right? So I've got my um, basic subdivision here, and it's going to basically more or less run down here. Um, I'm going to change this subdivision and bring it over here, and then bring it back on the bottom. And then I'm going to change it here, bring it out over here and then bring it back on the bottom. So I've got my shape now sort of styled out and subdivided. And I think I might need to actually, no, I think I'm gonna keep this continuous shape. I almost wanna bring it in, but I don't, I don't think that'll necessarily help much with the final image. Um, then I wanna remember that I've got this, this uh, circular bit at the top that's kind of changing that. And rather than be circular, I'm going to make it just kind of an odd um, elliptical shape so that it emphasizes that asymmetry. So I'm going to do something at the top more like this. Bring that down. Then I've got my boxy column bits up here and here. And um, I think I'm just going to style these two more like that, have those be asymmetrical as well. Bring the circle over just a bit. And then now it's just a matter of kind of just working through it, right? You know, start soft. I can run through the entire image this way, just with these soft lines. And this is going to be a column here. I have to think of where is this column going to go. This is this line is going to wind up being more or less the center of the column. So I have to be sure that I account for that a little bit. This is the edge of the building. So I screwed up here. So I just need to move that over, cap that off over here instead. And that narrow bit is going to go right there. The outer edge of the building is going to come out here. And then that outer edge is going to stick out even further because it's got that little, uh, little doodad on it. So I'm trying to do is get away from this basic contour as far as possible and create a more interesting um, kind of wacky out there shape for the building. Um, then I'm going to go in and subdivide again. I've got the center subdivision for these uh, for these two windows. And then remember the windows, they kind of had these little blocky things on top and slightly less blocky things on bottom. So I'm going to change those, make them funkier, and make asymmetrical windows. And then I've got another window over here. Little block at the bottom. And I have no window over here. Then um, I'm going to have a big window over here. So this guy is going to have a big block on top. Big wide window. Little subdivision. 
here. This is where it gets like fancy and broken up and complicated. So I've got a subdivision of space here. Um, my window is actually going to have a little block onto its own down here. And they've got columns that kind of separate them. So I'm going to account for the columns. And then my windows are actually going to go somewhere in here. Kind of narrow. And then down here, I've got this kind of funky window thing happening. It's got its own subdivision there. Then my door is actually going to sit kind of like, well, I think I need to move this column down. So I've got to go boom. I'm going to subdivide there such that it does not meet up with this subdivision. So it gets a little weirder. And then I'm going to bring this column down. So that, that looks a little bit better, and then my door is going to go in here, kind of behind that somewhere. And then this has a subdivision right at the base of the window, and kind of comes out like this in front. Um, then the door is going to sit back in space just slightly, and the outer edge of the door is probably going to be behind this column, um, so I can probably just throw it in like right here, make the column overlap it just a little bit. So now I'm getting to like where I'm making a lot more decisions about this. So I can then start going in with a sharper pencil and getting in more, getting into more of those specifics. Like I need, you know, more subdivisions, figure out this column width here, so on. So I need to change my column over here. And then I need to move this box over, move the window over, move the bottom of the window over. All these ghosts don't really matter. Because um, I go through and I start making these these like changes to it. And every time I make a change, like the I go a little bit darker. So that's the reason to draw a light. Remember, your pencil can go like super faint like this to where you probably can't even see it on the video. And it can go super dark like this. So between like faint and super dark, you have a lot of room to work with. So if you start faint, you're going to be better off. Okay, so I figured out these these subdivisions and these blocky things. I like this level of blockiness, so I'm going to bring that over to this guy. I've got this window. I'm going to narrow out this window here. I save the thin blockiness for under the window. Um, and then I've got this subdivision, which I'm going to change and make asymmetrical. Emphasize there. And then I've got subdivisions within that that I'm going to do. And I'm not going to, I'm going to make sure they don't intersect with this bit right here. I'm going to do two subdivisions. So it gets inter more interesting. And then I'm going to do inside that a little strange um, oval medallion thing. Maybe it's a window too. I don't know. I haven't decided that yet. Then I want to make sure that this outer contour just kind of echoes what I just set up inside there. So that's nice and broken up much more interesting. So now I just need to work on definition, right? So here's the edge of that column. That edge is going to run all the way down here. And it's going to hit this subdivision. This subdivision goes all the way across, out, and past everything. And it ends in a not 90 degree angle. And then there's these little uh, tooth looking things here. Need to be sure and put those in because those are fun. And I've got my narrow subdivision here. But actually, I'm just going to run all the way down to this. 
And this is my new top of the building. All the way down to the outer edge of the building. Maybe I can articulate the outer edge up there just a little bit so that it's less boring. Maybe even subdivide that. Or bring this down a little bit. That'd be kind of funny. And the building goes out and in over here too. Um, this subdivision, I'm going to run all the way down to the bottom. Um, I'm going to run all the way over and down to the bottom. So I have room now. I can increase this uh, size of the window here. I'm going to do that. And then I've got my subdivision that's going to ride over here. And I've got my little teeth. I'm increasing the size of the teeth just so you can see them. Without them, it's not going to be very clear. Um, now, so I've got this upper register like pretty defined, and that's going to kind of help me with the rest of everything. Um, so this is going to be the front plane, the center, central bit. So if I do that first, I'll be better off. So this is going to be like a curved subdivided area that kind of arcs out on either side. And that's going to be kind of like, um, uh, a mantle almost. I'm going to bring this in a little bit and do like a kind of echoing angle for this bit. Hit that curve thing. Then I'm going to come in really far from there. And that's going to be my kind of next subdivision of space. Then I'm going to do another little, um, another little angle bit right there. And then that's just going to um, go a little bit wider. This is going to be like the top subdivision of this next section. Then I've got these uh, three columns. So I'm going to bring these columns in. Each column is going to have its little ionic area. And then the center too. Boom. And then they're going to come down and they're going to have their own sort of base thing going on. So I need to figure out kind of where this bottom subdivision is. And it's going to kind of echo this one right here. So it's going to be this sort of thing. Okay, so that's going to come down. It's going to have its own little base of the column here, here, and here. The column's going to run down real thin. Boom, all different heights and craziness. Then uh, I'm going to run a top to bottom window right here, just because that's weirder. We haven't done that yet, and it's different. So the window is going to go in right here. Real tall and narrow. And then, so I've got this section kind of divided out. And then there's this little subdivision that I want to keep. Um, right here, and I think uh, that's going to help me with the inset. So it all has to relate to this thing. So it's probably going to come down right here, relate, and I'm going to go in soft with it, or softer rather. Bring it to the outside, to right there. Okay, so now I have the the center clearly clearly subdivided so then I can um, subdivide over here and I've got I'm gonna have a column out here that's gonna break up the outer bit and that's gonna have the same sort of um, curvature as this guy over here 
and he's going to stack in the same way with this asymmetrical thing. And then that guy is going to come basically all the way down to the base. Which is kind of ridiculous. And then there's going to be just a simple subdivision of space, like right here, just to keep just to keep it all sectioned off, like fancy in this section. Um, we're just going to kind of leave it. Then over here, we're going to do a mirroring column, with the bit that goes down, the uh, kind of circular arc bit. And then we're going to come basically uh, straight down to our next subdivision because that'll be funny. And we're going to run that subdivision like right across here and in the more or less the center of that. Okay, then um, we've got the window to deal with. Remember, we're going to make the top like big and blocky window coming in, narrow subdivision. And I'm moving things around a lot in this. I hope you can kind of see that, that this is really evolving and changing as I go further and further. And that's kind of what I want, right? Um, I'm making decisions as I go and I'm leaving room for change. And even at this stage, you know, when I take this and convert it to a form, like it's no big deal. I'm still gonna make, uh, make heavier changes. So, you know, the last version, I kind of got a draft. This is where I'm really like making all of the design decisions and making a lot of the big, uh, a lot of the big changes. You know, I might need to um, do something for the subdivision of, of space down here. Like I might need to change it in some way. Like I might need to, this kind of feels a little bit weird um, to have this column just sort of end. So I might need to like add a little bit of a something another little subdivision of space down here, which I think might work. The little platform or something that kind of comes over and subdivides. And, you know, I should probably run it across here. So I'm gonna do that. But I'm not gonna run it out as far as this. Um, and so, you know, this, this part looks awkward and I'd wanna fix that on like my final version, but you know, this is still draft status, so no big deal, right? Um, then I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna do a um, blocky subdivision of space here. Well, actually this is gonna be in front, so I need to deal with this first. So um, I've got a subdivision of space, like this is coming out, and then I need to do something under here. So I'm gonna go under, because I've got this like stack going on. I'm gonna go under, and then I'm gonna do another similar thing to this. I'm gonna stack it like that. Then blocky bit here. Then um, I'm going to do a little round guy. Like that. And then uh, come down here. Going to have a window that sits inside that and runs all the way down to the bottom here. This part is going to be subdivided again. This time it's just going to be straight blocky. And then that's going to run out to sort of like ground level here at this sort of angle. So that's kind of funny. And then I've got my door that's going to come in here. I'm going to make it like, put it, probably put it like right here. I still don't know what the door is going to look like. I need to decide on that. That's important. Um, then I'm going to do my blocky subdivision of space here. My column is going to be here. Um, 
I should probably echo the ionic look. So we'll go ionic right here. And then narrow it down. Make it kind of a funky shape. Bottom of the door is right there. I'll probably need to go in and maybe do some detail studies of things, but that's like, that can be left for later. So now what I want to do to like really kind of just finish this off is go in with some tones, you know, I've got my five value scale, white, half tone, got the tone, we got the core and the cast shadow or drop shadow, I say drop shadow because it's like um, less confusing to put a D than a, than a C for abbreviating. Cast shadow is pretty dark, or um, shadow core is pretty dark, but not super dark, not the maximum. Tone is about right in the middle of what the pencil can do. Half tone is just super soft, very distinct and and divided. So now I can go through and I can create some shadows and make sort of stuff go back in space. Like I can put some cast shadows down in between the teeth, under the teeth, and what these shadows are going to do is help me define like what's back and what's forward. And so I can just think of if the light's kind of coming straight down on it, like, what's that look like? So there's probably going to be like a little bit of, you know, tone over the teeth because the teeth are sitting back under that. And then I can go into like basically all these window areas. I can put some drop shadows in there and little thin ones under here. In some places, the cast shadow is just going to be like more or less a line, right? So I need to put one in here. It's going to hit that, but then there's going to be a bigger one here because this sticks out kind of far. I can soften that as I go out. And I just work my way down, right? Tone. That's going to have a, a cast shadow under it, drop shadow under it, um, drop shadow under here, drop shadow under here, and under here too, under here, and moving down, very faint one right here, definitely a deep sunken one here, this window is like going to be sunk down deep. Faint one under this, small one here, small one here, it's going to be a little bit under this uh, ionic column bit, and this sticks out here, so this is going to have a little bit of a drop shadow, and big drop shadow under here, smaller one under here. And this is back further, so that's going to have a bigger one. And in fact, I should probably keep these about the same size so that it makes sense together. And there's going to be one here. Then this whole section back here is going to be in shadow because that's all recessed behind everything else. And this part's going to be super dark around here. It's probably going to be our biggest section of draft shadow right here. Still want to be able to see the door though. Then a little mini one down here. Mini one here, mini shadow there. 
So yeah, I pretty much defined all of the shadows. I can go through with, with um, a few more. Like there's probably going to be a little one right here. A little one right here. A little one right here. Then you went in here. This one's probably going to need to fade out a little bit. And so on. Um, and then I can do like local value decisions. Like I can decide if, you know, what's darker, but I can also do that with the texture step. So, um, you know, I can do some things like I know that windows are going to, are going to be kind of dark. So I'm going to, I want different darknesses of windows. This window area is going to be super dark. Um, this window area is also going to be pretty dark. I think I'm going to take this window and make it probably the core tone. Then this one I'm going to do um, maybe with a regular tone. Probably push the core a little bit darker so it's actually a core. Don't want to lose that division of space there either. Keep those super light. That way too, there's a progression. Be more interesting. So each level has its own sort of like window tone. Um, make sure the door. I'm gonna make a glass door, so that's gonna be kind of windowish. So that needs to have the core tone also. There we go. So that's my like sort of mostly final design for like my inventive building based on a reference.